Welcome to this episode of the course SEG 2105. Today we're talking about reusability and frameworks. Reusability is all about building on what other people have done. As you can see here on this slide, there are a number of different types of things we can reuse. We can start, for example, reusing expertise of people. Expertise means that we're simply asking them what they've done or reading things that they've done and re-implementing that. Another thing we can do is reuse standard designs where people have published and agreed on standard ways of doing things like algorithms for sorting, particular data structures, and so on. We reuse those ideas and, and enable people to enable ourselves to get work done much faster. For example, Linus Torvalds re-implemented Unix and created Linux. That was a reuse of a design that was well understood at the time. Another thing we can do is reuse libraries of code, large libraries of code that have already been written. The first two types of reuse were not reusing code, just reusing ideas. But now we take the actual code that people have written, it's compiled in large libraries, for example, the Java libraries that many of you have already used. Another thing we can reuse is features of the operating system, commands built into the operating system. Unix is famous for its commands, grep and sed and, and orc and many others that you can put together to create powerful tools. Another type of reuse which we'll talk about today is frameworks. This is a type of library, but it goes beyond libraries. Frameworks are specifically designed to allow you to build on them to create particular kinds of applications. And finally, there's reuse of applications themselves. An application such as Microsoft Excel may have a macro language built right into it. And in that case, you can build a mini application right inside another application. A framework is a reusable system that implements a generic solution. Not a specific solution, but a generic solution to a particular problem. It allows you to do certain things that that problem demands without having to write the code for that. Okay, so the idea is, is that there are many different kinds of applications that do different but related things. For example, in a few minutes we'll see uh, frequent buyer or loyalty programs. They all do the same kind of thing. You, you stack up points for a particular purchase and as you get more points, you can then use those points to purchase flights or purchase products. The idea is, why should people who want to create a new loyalty program or a new frequent buyer program re-implement all of the kinds of code that they would need? Um, they might simply be able to take a lot of existing code and reuse it. And so people might write a, write a framework which would allow people to do this more easily. The idea behind a framework is that it's not a complete application. It's incomplete, and there are certain pieces of code that you, you need to write. And we talk about three main kinds of code. The first kind of code are the slots. A slot is a place where you have to write code. The code is actually missing. You have to write, write some code in order to get the application to work. Usually a framework has only a few slots, and once you write those, those slot pieces of code, then you have the basis of an application. Other things are called hooks, or extension points. These are places where you can optionally write code, but you don't have to. You can accept the default code if you want. We're going to see examples of this later on. And finally, there is code that is written that is more or less complete, and you call the methods in that. That code is called the API, or Application Programming Interface. In the object-oriented world, frameworks come as libraries of classes. The API is the set of all public methods in, in those classes. There may be private methods as well, but it's the public ones that are the API. So you can call the public API methods in order to do work. Some examples of systems which you might develop from framework include payroll management systems. 
You can buy payroll management systems that are complete, but you may prefer to obtain a framework that does the basic kinds of things that payroll management systems need to have, such as registering new employees, um, entering the amount of pay that they're going to have in the system, deciding on pay periods, entering the hours people have worked every month, and so on. And, however, you will have to write some code for special rules that you have, the taxes that are present in your country or state or province or region, um, and many other special rules would have to be written as hook methods, and you might have also slot methods that would connect into your particular database or other parts of your system that you have to write. Frequent buyer clubs or loyalty programs uh, might come as frameworks as well. The idea here is that, yes, all such applications accumulate points, but you might have to hook that into your inventory system and your point of sale system so people can obtain points. You might have to hook it into your e-commerce system. So in fact, e-commerce website frameworks is another idea. Now, all e-commerce websites have this, this common idea of the, 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 the way to check out. Um, you, you, you would say, click on a bunch of items and put them in your cart and then check out at the end. And they're all the same. However, there are many differences. You would probably have special types of products, um, maybe demonstrations of your products, uh, links to web pages of your products, and different kinds of frequent buyer or loyalty systems to hook into your system. So you'd have to write some code. And so the application would need to be enhanced um, to turn it from a framework into an application. Systems for University registration, student information systems, another example of something which might come as a framework that you would have to adapt to meet your needs. For example, here at the University of Ottawa, we have bilingual uh, courses, and, and so we might have to adapt a framework to allow it to work in both languages. A product line is a set of product based on common technology. So you might take a framework and create a variety of different products from it. Each of those products might have different features to satisfy different markets. So for example, you might create a line of microwave ovens. And some of these microwave ovens might be very fancy with lots of buttons and features, and others might be very simple. And so you, you might develop a framework for the microwave ovens your company makes, and then you might adapt these to make um, different versions for different microwave oven models that you have. So the software that's common to all of the products will be included in your framework. And each product would be made by filling in the available hooks and slots. So for example, you might have um, a demo version of your product that will be missing a number of important features. Some of the hooks wouldn't be filled in. You might have a pro version that would then have all the features. And that version would have all of the hooks filled in to do all the important stuff that people want. Frameworks come in a number of different flavors. We have horizontal frameworks. Okay, so here we see the idea of a horizontal framework. Horizontal framework might have a lot of slots, a lot of hooks that you have to write, not much code inside it. Thin, okay, you have to fill in these slots, you can write code for these hooks, and then you have to write a lot of other code on top maybe to call the framework. Ultimately, the framework provides some services, but you still have to write a lot of code. Or alternatively, you could have a vertical framework that does an awful lot of work. Much more code in the framework, maybe just one small slot that needs filling, maybe a, a, a few hooks, but the framework does most of the work. You just have to add a veneer, a small layer of stuff on top to make it look nice for your particular environment. So horizontal versus vertical frameworks. That brings us to the end of this short video on reusability and frameworks.